Well, I can't say I'm surprised to be making this video, but on the 25th of March 2020, it was officially announced that the in-development crowdfunded MMORPG Chronicles of Illyria was officially cancelled. Just to give you a quick TLDR of this whole thing, here's what's happened. Indie Studio sets out to make incredibly ambitious MMORPG and turns to Kickstarter for $900,000 funding, which is absolutely nowhere near enough money to make the game, but they don't make this clear during the Kickstarter, and backers don't understand how much MMOs cost to make, so they believe it's possible. The devs estimated that this incredibly ambitious MMO will be ready by the end of December 2017. They thought they could make an MMO in two years of development with $900,000. They continued crowdfunding through their website in hopes of getting the game to a demo state where they can attract a publisher, all this time keeping their backers under the illusion that the game is entirely funded through crowdfunding and not letting it be known that real investment is needed. The game eventually raised $7.9 million, still a drop in the bucket compared to how much money is needed to make this game, but also nine times the amount of money they initially asked for to finish the game on Kickstarter. They still couldn't find a publisher or private investment to fund the game. 11th of March 2020, they launch a big sale for land in a game that's nowhere near completion and at this point will obviously never exist, prices ranging from $65 to 1350 20th of March 2020. Pre-alpha testing begins, but it's basically just some shitty parkour tech demo that looks nothing like the game they advertised and has no MMO features. It looks like something that's been thrown together in Unity in a few weeks. Five days later, they announce they've run out of money, finally come clean about looking for additional money for investors or publishers, staff laid off, game shut down. Now there's obviously a lot more to this story, but that's the general gist of things, but I I want to go back to the beginning and go a little bit more in depth here as I know many people are disappointed by this news and it's not only massively damaging for the MMO genre but for all future crowdfunded projects in general. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this project, Chronicles of Illyria was initially kickstarted in 2016 with a $900,000 goal but over the years went on to raise $7.9 million as they continued crowdfunding through their website. I have to admit back in 2016 this was the first Kickstarter MMO I was really excited for. I never backed this project because I just didn't see how they could afford to make the game, but I really liked the look of it. At the time when Chronicles was going through its Kickstarter, I remember so many people messaging me about the game and talking about it. The hype levels for this game were through the roof, and based on what they were promising, you could see why. Chronicles of Illyria seemed like a role player's dream. It was a game where your character aged, could gain weight, have children, and eventually die per permanently with progress and status carrying over to your family's next generation. On top of that, the game was trying to implement complex climbing and parkour mechanics, the entire world was built by the players, in-depth player-driven economy and crafting systems, the ability to form settlements, countries and kingdoms, the list goes on. Needless to say, a really fucking ambitious project. I personally followed this game somewhat casually, only really looking at trailers of progress that they posted on their YouTube channel, and from an outsider's point of view it looked like they were making reasonable progress with the game for around a year and a half after the game was kickstarted. There were somewhat regular trailers showing the development process, the world building and climbing mechanics, but we never really got to see any gameplay systems or groups of players doing anything. It was always one character walking around and just showing off environments and stuff. Personally, I lost interest in Chronicles of Illyria and became skeptical of this project after they stopped making trailers of their progress, and instead started showing gameplay of this world in a hyper-stylized cartoon test environment that ran at 10 FPS with no other players on the screen and looked nothing like the game that people had backed in the years prior. I understand that games are developed in grey box, but the fact that they didn't even have a somewhat developed part of the world made where they could really show off the game to the people who had funded them thus far and give them something to be excited about was a big red flag for me. So in the end, I never really made a dedicated video promoting this game and I didn't genuinely believe the game would ever exist, especially when you look into its lack of funding. In the letter where the CEO of this project, Caspian, announces that the game's shutting down, he talks about how it was 
was the plan all along to use the $900,000 Kickstarter money to make a demo to then attract publishers and investors. But in the actual Kickstarter, there's no mention of this whatsoever. They never informed the community this was the case. People thought they were directly funding this game, and as you can imagine, had people been aware of this, it might have changed their decision to support this project. Caspian, the main guy behind Chronicles of Valeria, seems like he's been a massive fraud from day one. He claimed that he invested 500k of his own money to develop the game up to the point where it was shown for the Kickstarter, but someone in the industry came out on Reddit recently and said he had nowhere near that amount of money, and the guy was known in the industry for starting projects but never finishing anything. The same guy also claims that the pre-alpha footage used for the Kickstarter was all pre-rendered smoke and mirrors footage, and an actual pre-alpha didn't exist. This could explain why the visuals of the gameplay shown in the past year look nothing like what was teased during the Kickstarter. We have a breakdown of the wages at Soulbound Studios, and this Caspian guy used the money that was pledged to this game to pay himself a salary of $234,000 per year. This absolute scumbag was hyping up the sale of land in this fake MMO only 14 days before it was announced as shut down. When he was doing this sale, there's no way he couldn't have known that the game would never exist. Financials is something that you're aware of months in advance. He would have known months ago that this game would never be finished, yet still continued to sell things that would never exist. This surely has to be illegal or something. You don't go from selling land and hyping an Alpha 1 test to shut down within the space of two weeks. He absolutely wanted to milk the community until the very last possible minute. The actual announcement of the game being cancelled consists of 800 words at the bottom of a news post that mostly reads as some kind of progress update. People have followed this guy's game for years, allowed him to take a 200k per year salary, he's lied to them from day one and continued to beg for money as soon as 14 days before it was shut down completely out of the blue, and he gives them a mere paragraph of explanation. Unbelievable. It's quite sad really, I've had so many messages from people who formed guilds, donated thousands of dollars, got involved with the Discord daily and really put all their hopes into this game. And whilst it's always dangerous to get that invested into crowdfunded games, what Chronicles of Illyria was promising just doesn't exist in gaming, and with MMOs having a passionate audience that are looking for an escape from reality, I can understand why the community that this game appealed to was so emotionally involved in it. To me, the saddest thing about this scam is that every legit crowdfunded project in development will take a hit because of it, and it's absolutely understandable why the people who invested in Chronicles Valeria, or even people that just watched this project from afar, might never want to help back another crowdfunded game, and maybe we get less games as a result of that. I want to end this video by talking about the kickstarted games that haven't been scams, the games that have shown consistent progress, transparency, and released to happy backers. Albion Online, this game had over 250,000 founders and raised almost $10 million in funding, and since release seems to have gone from strength to strength. The game went free to play in 2019 and since then saw a massive boost in population and is consistently pulling in solid player numbers. I've heard a lot of good things about Albion recently and I plan on jumping back into it and covering it soon. Temtem is a Pokemon style MMO that I recently covered on this channel and it's already gone on to be a great success. The game the game was kickstarted in June 2018, and less than two years later released into a very playable and enjoyable early access state to very positive reviews on Steam. Some of you may not know this, but without crowdfunding, we wouldn't have the biggest, most popular ARPG out at the moment with Path of Exile. Back in 2012, Grinding Gear games were running out of money and decided to crowdfund on their own website. They generated $2.5 million and, well, the rest is history. Initially called Shards Online, Legends of Aria was kickstarted back in 2014 and released into early access on Steam in 2019. Whilst it's not my cup of tea, the game wasn't a scam and definitely appeals to a niche audience, which is what crowdfunding is all about really, bringing niche games that wouldn't typically be commercially viable into existence. Project Gorgon, very old school MMO with a lot of charm about it, buy to play early access on Steam, made by a husband and wife team, 97% positive reviews recently and a game that 
that pays homage to classics like Asheron's Cool. Glory of Victus. This medieval battle and life simulator MMO has a very small team, but they've been churning out consistent updates and progress over many years at this point, and the game is in a fun and playable enough state that you can enjoy it and progress in the game. Recently, they've finally added mounts to the game, which was the update I was most looking forward to, and whilst it's still early access, it has a respectable player count and servers across multiple regions. Outward. This game actually failed to raise the money it needed on Kickstarter, but luckily was picked up by a publisher, so managed to release anyway. And holy shit, I loved this game. It's an open world RPG with survival elements. I covered this game last year and made what I think is one of my best first impressions video on my channel with this game. Really happy that it exists. Walson Lords of Mayhem. This game released earlier this year to huge success after initially raising 400k on Kickstarter. It currently has mixed reviews on Steam due to bugs, but it seems like a lot of people have enjoyed this game. And then you've obviously got Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, Elite Dangerous, and all the decent early access titles that have come out of Steam over the years, such as Subnautica, Ark Survival Evolved, The Forest, Conan Exiles, and so on. We've obviously got a lot of crowdfunded MMOs that are still in development, such as Crowfall, Pantheon, Camelot Unchained, Ashes of Creation, Star Citizen Fractured, and so on. These games all seem to be made making decent progress, and none of them seem to be scams, but we'll have to wait and see if any of them actually get finished. My point is, not every crowdfunded game is a scam, even though I read that exact comment a lot whenever I cover one of these types of games. A lot of good has come out of crowdfunding, and it's important to not let a few con artists ruin it for everyone else. Just use some critical thinking before supporting a crowdfunded game. If someone's promising the world in an MMO for only 900k, you've got to question that. If the game doesn't have private investment, it's obviously never going to be made. Now, whether or not it was the intention of Chronicles of Valyria to be a scam from day one, I have no idea, but it was certainly misleading from day one, and personally, I think over the past year or two, when it became more obvious that the game would never be completed, it's been a pure your cash grab before the inevitable announcement of the shutdown. I really hope the class action lawsuit from the Chronicles of Valyria community is successful, and my condolences to anyone that wasted their money or is disappointed by this news. I hope one day you will all get the MMO that you've been waiting for. But that's it for this video guys, please let me know your thoughts on this whole situation in the comments below. Additionally, feel free to follow me on the social media links on screen where I sometimes might post. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again really soon.